It's the WP Minute Plus, your home for long-form discussions with WordPress professionals and industry experts covering our favorite topic, WordPress. Be sure to follow us. Search for WP Minute in your favorite podcast app. Follow this podcast and our five-minute weekly edition. Or head to the WPMinute.com slash subscribe and join the newsletter. I'm told it's like a warm WordPress blanket that gets delivered to your doorstep every week. Looking for all things WordPress? The WP Minute has you covered. This episode of the WP Minute Plus is brought to you by our friends at OmniSend, the top-rated email and SMS marketing platform for WordPress stores. With OmniSend, you'll be launching pre-built e-commerce automations in no time, as well as intuitively segmenting customers based on their shopping behavior and even trying out SMS or push notifications all from the same platform. More than 100,000 e-commerce brands use OmniSend to drive sales and build better customer relationships, converting their customers with quick-to-create, highly relevant emails and texts. Are you ready to start building campaigns that really sell and convert your customers? Find out more at Omnisend.com. That's Omnisend.com. O-M-N-I-S-E-N-D.com. Omnisend.com. And give your brand the boost it deserves. Hey, Vic, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Matt. CEO of Pressable, first podcast ever. I am uh, delighted <laughs> to have you here uh, as the as the first podcast. Yeah, I'm excited to be here with you. Pressable is a pillar sponsor. We can't thank you enough for sponsoring the content that we do here at uh, the WP Minute. Really helps everybody check out Pressable.com. Check out the content and the videos that I have on the site. Links will be in the show notes. When I interviewed Jess Frick a few months ago, we talked about sort of Pressable as sort of having like this startup culture vibe, like a startup within a startup, even though Automatic is a billion years old in tech terms. Is that a is that a culture that you that you really latch onto? Is that a vibe you really latch onto as the CEO uh, of Pressable? How do you do it? Uh, is there a sort of north star for sort of being like you know the 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 kid in the classroom amongst the two thousand other automaticians that are at the company? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we focus on trying to be really rapid with anything we do. So, you know, I think in a larger organization, you have to, you have to coordinate with, in, in this case, a couple thousand people to make a lot of changes. And in Pressable's case, because we're, we're isolated and uh, we treat it like a true startup, we can just say, hey, we're, we're going to go build something and we don't need to think about it after that. We just go do it. Uh, and so that lets us, I think, go to market with features and functionality and <clears throat> marketing changes and anything a lot faster than a larger organization would. You all recently did, recently again within a couple months, a sort of redesign of the dashboard and a, an approach of how folks can manage their sites uh, through Pressable. I assume if that was like a dot com rollout, it would have been years <laughs> for that to like go out versus maybe your team is a lot more, a lot more agile. Do you have to? like run things through the autom automatic org chart to make those changes? Or it is, like you said, like we can rapidly deploy this as long as it's sensible, you know, UI customization or upgrades to the platform. Yeah, the latter. We can, uh, I think in the case of the dashboard project, uh, our front end designer, Wayne, uh, just, you know, one night was thinking about it and he didn't talk about it with anybody. Just uh, a couple of days later, he came to us and said, hey, I've got this great idea. And Honestly, I think within six or eight weeks or so, he had a functioning version of what you see today. And, you know, it was just a quick, yeah, let's do it. No, no coordination with anybody inside Automatic for that. One of the things that was interesting when I talked to to Jess is that, you know, at Automatic, and, and recently Matt made this post, he's going on or has gone on a sabbatical, but he made this post about cards in automatic. Is that the only way I know, I know how to say it? You probably have the right term for it, but cards in automatic where there's a bunch of hosting companies that a lot of people probably just don't think of off the top, immediately off the top of the head. Pressable, of course, .com, VIP, which sometimes people can forget about if you're not really talking about enterprise in WordPress a lot of the time. And then maybe the WP Cloud Project. Does, that, does Jesse Friedman and team get hosting cards 
I think they're actually the help the host call oh. <clears throat> because they're they're trying to they're trying to make every host out there successful, whereas Pressable, VIP, and dot com are more the be the host. And where I was going with this is like stitching that communication across the organization, right? So Pressable might have a customer, let's say, whale of a customer, right? I used to be a sales guy for Pagely. Whale of a customer, and then somebody at VIP goes, hey, hey, Vic, what, who's that? Who, who do you have over there paying you $30,000 a month on your infrastructure? Why don't we slide them over to you know the VIP side? It's just an interesting dynamic to have these multi-brands across Automatic for Hosting. How do you all communicate? Do you have like, these are my customers, this is my customer type, so we're going to keep it on our infrastructure. And if they were large publisher, then sure, they can go over to, to VIP. How do you split that sharing of, of customers and, and approach? Yeah, you know, I think it's pretty simple. And the, the, the way we approach everything is what's best for the customer, which business or which platform is going to serve the customer's needs best. And that's what matters, right? It's not about uh, where does the revenue belong or which one's going to drive more revenue. You know, I, I think a good example, we had a lead come into Pressable uh, a few months ago uh, and it was very clearly an enterprise site. It government related. Uh, we could have hosted it without any challenges, but, you know, we thought they would be better served by VIP. So we, we sent it over to them and they're now with VIP. What about WooCommerce? Do you have an approach when you're building out whatever solutions for WooCommerce, whether it's in the dashboard or the hosting infrastructure? Do you have the flexibility to say, hey, we, we can come up with our own way of doing WooCommerce hosting or is automatic as a whole saying, no, like we're going to usher in this hosted WooCommerce experience? Or do you have that freedom to, to create your own Woo kind of implementation? I think we have the freedom to create our own implementation and to work pretty closely with the Woo team on sites that, you know, may not be best for Woo Express, uh, but they're not quite at the VIP level. And so uh, we work with uh, with Woo and those customers pretty closely to put them on Pressable today. I'm trying to illustrate this picture, especially against the the canvas of, of these cards that Matt just launched, launched. Hosts, if you have a host card at <clears throat> Automatic, you are part of one of the hosts, and your job is to encourage folks to host with your brand. So Vic is probably going to have the Pressable hosting card, and you're, he's going to encourage you to, to host with Pressable. You might run into another automatician who has uh, helped the host card, and that's to yeah. help with with any host, right? Is that the the thing? Yeah, absolutely. And so I think like in the example of Woo, they may have a customer that comes in that's at some third party host, uh, I think WP Engine or Kinsta, wherever. Uh, and if we can solve the problem for them while they stay at that host, you know, we're gonna do that. Obviously if if we think they may be their problem may not be solvable there, we'll make some other recommendations. But I think that the goal is very much to be uh, neutral in, in, that, in that sense. So they're helping the customer regardless of where they are. So ultimately, we're helping all the hosting companies. And if you're at like Pocket Cast, you're like, yeah, I just go host at Wix. Doesn't matter to us. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter to us. <laughs> no. uh, every, every WordPress is special, I think, as, as Matt put it, right? It's like this rising tide you know, lifts all boats. And it, it's sort of a, just another... You know, we've seen this um, in the industry for a while where uh, Automatic invests so much uh, time and, and resources that, you know, one might feel like, eh, you know, if we're another web host, why, why, why would we work with Automatic when they have their own hosting so it's, it's competitive, you know, but you could flip the table and say, well, you're profiting way more than Automatic is on this hosting. So as a sort of neutral way of saying, hey, look, our, all of Automatic will help any web host because we want just WordPress to thrive. However, if you're on the Pressable team, the .com team, the VIP team, we will say our product is great and you should host with us. And I think that's a fair way, a fair approach to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the, the thing we I think want to convey to everybody in the community right, is WordPress as a whole, this open source project is vital and the entire community needs to exist and be successful for for anybody to exist in it right it's not just about automatic it's about 
uh, all the theme and plugin developers and all the other hosts being successful as well. It's a good uh, transition, uh, how WordPress is vital. I mean, part of the reason why I do what I do here at the WP Minute is because it's not just, hey, I, I love WordPress. I love to tinker with WordPress. I love to build with WordPress. That's an element of it. But WordPress as an open source app that's so widely used doesn't mean people care about it. Right? Like, I mean, it doesn't mean like the person running their WordPress website like loves WordPress like we do and like cares about it. But there's a, a freedom that they don't really fully understand what they have, that this tool is built largely out in the open with thousands of developers contributing to it. And then then, th then there's a pool of sort of what I'll say, third party, the community, which also supports it, which you just don't get from any other crucial app in your life, <laughs> right? You don't, unless you're running, unless you're the diehard geek and you just run Linux uh, on your on your laptop, you know, in your in your home devices, right? But you you don't get it from a Microsoft, you don't get it from an Apple, you don't get it from the computer that runs your car or your television. Like th this stuff is so vital, I think, to to humanity <laughs> from the software side, from the publishing side. It blows my mind that people in tech still don't get this. Press, media, other startup founders, they don't understand the, the gravity of, of WordPress, which is still boggling to me in 2024. It seems pretty fundamental, especially the web. I think it's, I don't know what the current stat is, but 40, 45% of the web is powered by, by WordPress today. And you look at some of these closed platforms that exist out there that then own your data and you're limited in how you build your site, how you can market, whether it's SEO or whatever it may be. Um, and then you compare it to WordPress and there's such a huge, huge advantage that I don't think everybody truly appreciates. Luckily though, I do think the, at least the WordPress community largely does appreciate, especially everybody who's contributing back to core. One day when Matt is on a TechCrunch interview, I hope they finally understand <laughs> since they've been running on WordPress for a decade plus because I helped build the first version with 10up years ago when they actually poured it over to WordPress. I hope that one of the reporters or podcasters there finally understands like .com, .org and the value of open source WordPress. It drives me bonkers uh, that we're still having to define that and define the the value of having open source. I saw somebody on Twitter the other day, you know, saying, I haven't touched WordPress in eight years and I logged in and it's a mess and, you know, screenshots showing all this, the frustrations. One, you haven't touched it in eight years. <laughs> what, what did you expect? Uh, but two, he's like, I'm a developer. Why should I use any of this when I can get Webflow and all this? Because it's open source, man. <laughs> like we can all do this together. You're not going to love every nook and cranny of WordPress but it's yours and you can participate and help make this thing better. I get really emotional when I start talking about this stuff when I see it, uh, especially when I see it on Twitter. But man, it's like, I, I think hu the human race needs to get educated on data ownership and lock-in. Like you have to make these, you have, there's no, you can't just, oh, Facebook, Here's all my stuff. Here's all my photos. Here's all my videos. You have to understand what you're doing with this stuff. You can't just like throw it out there and then say, well, whatever happens to my data happens, or I don't care if I have to pay absorbent fees if they just keep raising price. We have another solution. It's not perfect, but it's there, in my opinion. Yeah. And you, know, you talk about data, data archive, like there's this data liberation product or uh, concept now. Uh, and, you know, over the years, I've, I've talked to, many, many business owners who are running e-com stores and they move from Woo or Magento or whatever to Shopify. And then a couple of years later, uh, they want to get back and they want to get out of it and go back to something like WordPress with, with Woo because uh, they can't do so many things within Shopify, but they're locked into it. And they didn't realize and understand just how hard it was going to be to move away from it. So the, I think this data liberation uh, focus for this year is, is a big one to help people hopefully understand, but at least give them opportunities to get out of some of these closed platforms and support the open source community. Let's unpack that a little bit. Was that sort of like, um, 
an all my well, air quotes for those watching was that like an all hands for automatic to say like just like this host thing we all have to be part of this data like is there a I don't know. Okay, I don't want to say OKR, but is there like a KPI OKR that that Pressable has to do to help with the data liberation project? Is that an all hands kind of thing across Automatic? I think the desire is that if, if we have any tooling that exists to help migrate a, a site from one platform to another, that we should be contributing it contributing it to the to the project. I don't know if there's KPIs or something like that around it, but you know, I, th- I think it is, it's a very important focus for the community to be able to survive because as time goes on, people who are building their sites at Wix and Squarespace or you know, Shopify or wherever are ultimately going to realize that it's great for very specific needs, but as your business grows, uh, it's probably not best for your business. Yeah. I'll never understand how, and this was another thread, and I saw Matt chime in on it. I forget which e-commerce store it was but i think they said they were hosting with uh maybe it was vip or dot com I, I, maybe neither and, and they just had wordpress and they were doing a lot of revenue with with woocommerce and um they just like hey we've we've hit this ceiling uh, and now we're moving to shopify <laughs> it's just like what wow, this it, it, wordpress was great but it, it was a bottleneck and and then we we just we found this bottleneck and now we're, we're moving to shopify because obviously shopify can scale but then you're locked in. <laughs> and then when you want to adjust in the future, it's going to be more costly, more challenging. And then God knows what's going to happen with the platform. Again, I know I'm biased to, to WordPress. And this is sort of like an education thing. People just don't realize that things can scale. And I'm sure there's developers out there going, oh, memory buffer on MySQL <laughs> eventually hits it. Okay, I get it. But at least people can come in and you can bring in hardware, you can attach other solutions to WordPress, and it's not just WordPress is the problem. It's the hosting infrastructure that probably you built it on, and there's there's ways around it for for most people. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a, a common problem, right? I've been, I've been hosting for, I don't know, 20 years or something, and uh, in a former life, we did a lot of Magento hosting. You know, Magento was open source, and uh, as Shopify became more popular, uh, a lot of people had the same the same concept where they say, oh, well, I'm running into these challenges, so let me move over to Shopify. Uh, and, you know, like I said before, over, you know, X number of months or a year or two later, they would come back and say, whoa, whoa, whoa this is, like, this sucks. Like, aren't there aren't there better solutions? Like, can't I use Woo and, and make this work? And how much can I scale, right? And it becomes just a question of the infrastructure you're providing it. And that's where... Like in, in the case of Pressable, right, the infrastructure scales up. And so we have Woo stores, you know, running millions of dollars of transactions to them with zero problems. It, it all comes back to the, the development of the store and the infrastructure behind it. Years ago, I made a lot, not just me, but a lot of folks predicted that hosting companies would be, it's obvious to say, like the, the future of WordPress, like the future of way people experience WordPress. Hosting companies would have their own way of doing WordPress. Just like you log into .com and it has like this Calypso experience or whatever they dub it. I would have anticipated, you know, making that prediction five, six years ago that every time you logged into a a web hosting company's WordPress install, it would be just like built a little bit different for that company. Pressable might have their own onboarding sort of way of, of, of going about it. Maybe even have a different admin. Is that something that you that you think is important for WordPress to continue to thrive, to have these sort of tailored experiences, or do we need to keep WordPress true to its core experience so that everyone knows you're using a WordPress website? Let's, let, let's not lose the branding and experience of WordPress by making our own flavors of it. That's a good question. I think it probably depends on who's actually using or building the site, right? I think in the case of a developer or an agency with their developers that's building hundreds or thousands of WordPress sites, they probably want and need the same exact experience everywhere where, you know, I think somebody brand new to WordPress uh, might benefit from a little bit of a tailored onboarding. And so I think it depends on which profile of customer you're you're pursuing and trying to serve. Uh, not that I think the experience should uh, be 
so different from core for those users. But I think for somebody brand new coming into it, it can be sometimes a little challenging for them to say like, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. Where, where do I start? Uh, and helping them just get started and learn a little bit, I think is, is probably beneficial to them. Publishing with WordPress is, uh, is probably like true to its, its core experience, right? Starting as a blogging platform, then turned into this sort of platform to develop websites and applications. Now all these other bespoke different uh, use cases for, for WordPress. There's a, pu- and I'm going to forget the name of it right now. Is, there's a, a, a publisher solution in automatic as well, right? Is it Newspack? Newspack. Do, do, how do they interface with, with you as a host? Like, do you work with them to say, hey, let's go and integrate like this Newspack? Is that a flavor of WordPress? Yeah, I believe it is a, a flavor of WordPress. I think it's a, it's, it's tailored based on what their need is, but they, Newspack essentially runs their own hosting as well. It runs on the same underlying infrastructure as Pressable and you know, dot com and, and others, it, it runs on WP Cloud ultimately. Okay. Uh, but I think they they tailor their product specifically for publishers. Yeah, they have a hosting card. <laughs> they have their own hosting card. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah. Yes. One of the things that has been challenging for some folks through like publishing content, right? Is still in the year twenty twenty four, you know, still wrapping our heads around the block editor, full site editing that experience of WordPress feels like it's taking a while to catch up to competitors. It's funny, W3 Techs, maybe you saw this, they do their annual report on like the biggest, or I guess it's a recurring data that just constantly updates, but they put out their biggest uh, CMS for the year and it was Elementor. (laughs) And uh, W3 Techs is sort of like, WordPress is, and I, you know, I'm just paraphrasing here, but they said, hey, it, it's hard to see WordPress grow when they're already at 60% of the CMS market. So now we're just going to start recommending, now we're just going to start showing you like plugins that run on top of it. Like that's how big WordPress has, has gotten. Do you see any particular challenges or is there a, a particular competitor you have your eye on that has an experience that you say, you know what, be great if if we had a news pack flavor at Pressable or, or we went after site builders and we had, you know, Elementor things you would do with Gutenberg and full site editing. Do you have like a competitor you keep your eye on and say, boy, they do it great. And maybe we should just watch them to see what they do. So one, we, we probably watch uh, the entire market pretty closely, but I don't think we look at it as a, let's go try to mimic one of the site builders or anything like that. We're, we're very focused on the developers and agencies who probably don't need a tailored experience, right? A lot of, a lot of our agencies use Elementor, uh, and a lot of them use half a dozen of the other ones that exist out there, right? And so for, because, because we're so focused on serving agencies and those developers today, we don't try to modify the, the core experience for them. Or we we want to give them a unopinionated uh, version of a of core, so they can build how they choose. Yeah, is a- agencies the is that the the sweet spot for pressable agencies? Yeah, it it has been for for a little while. We've been focused on building the product to serve their needs, and you know most of our growth has come from that market in in the last couple of years. Sell to one customer, get many. Uh, approach, you know, and for that. Yeah. And I think from a service and support standpoint, right, we, we, we try to shine ourselves or, you know, one of our differentiators is we want to provide customers, those agencies specifically with the best possible support we can. Uh, and so when we have a fewer number of direct customers, uh, we think we can serve them better than, uh, trying to serve every individual out there and letting those agencies ultimately generate revenue themselves. Yeah. Do you, aside from WordCamps, um, does Pressable have a presence in any other sort of event or media that is focused on on agencies? I've been hearing about CloudFest lately. Are there other events that you you go to, or or how do you reach these these agencies aside from the massive flagship? Word camps. You know, I think a lot of it is word of mouth. Uh, we we have sponsored some smaller agency specific summits, like the um, 
digital mastermind group, which is a, it's a very small community. I think there's 30 or 40 or so agencies in there. And when we do things like that, we, we try not to be the salespeople selling the agencies. Instead, we're really soliciting their feedback and trying to understand what their, what their pain points are, what are their business needs, what are their developers needs so we can build a better product. And hopefully that ultimately leads to uh, more agencies finding Pressable and using it. Uh, but really for us, it's about research and ensuring we're serving what they actually need. You all jumping into the, it's kind of comical to say this now, but in 2024, but are you jumping into anything extra AI on the Pressable platform that's not included inside of core Jetpack? Because uh, I know Jetpack comes with every uh, account at Pressable, but are you doing and an extending any other features with AI? We haven't yet. We, we've we been... good. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, away just, it, just like everybody else, we're, we're watching very closely. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the use cases that we've seen, I think others are serving, right? Like this site generate, you know, obviously creating content, uh, AI site generators, right? But we think the agencies should probably pick and choose what tools they want versus us trying to be super opinionated and dictate, okay, hey, this is this is the thing. Now, maybe as you know, if they become clear leaders, those might be things we partner with or bring in later. But right now, uh, most of our customers aren't even talking about AI with us. Yeah. Still, I'm skeptical. I only use it for some content things, you know, pulling stuff out of a transcript, summaries, ideation, stuff like that. I can't see it being a part of my website generation process. Because ultimately, I just feel like I'm going to do I'm whatever you make me, I'm going to change. <laughs> like whatever it comes up with, I'm going to change. And I know it's supposed to get smarter and better and faster and all this stuff. Uh, but at this point, it's still not there. What could be interesting from like outside the box of websites for Pressable would be like AI that summarizes or uh, you can interface with uh, customer stats. You know, is there a trend here? Where is the site? Where is this data coming from or where the tra is the traffic coming from? That would be kind of cool. Hey, this little chat bot that you can have with stats, that's outside of the build me a web page kind of thing. We're still early in 2024. Is, is there anything that you have sort of on the docket that's coming to the product? Anything that you're excited about headed into 2024? Yeah, we, we've done a lot in the last six, eight months to help with, you know, managing plugin updates and adding our own little twist to, to, to we think be helpful to, to customers. But one of the things we're looking at tying into that is security based updates. So, Hey, there's a known vulnerability. So only update those plugins for us. And then other things that we were probably going to have in, in the coming months where we're going to improve our data sync. So obviously staging the production is a, it's a big deal. So we're going to give people a little more flexibility and, uh, in what exactly is synced over when, and that that's a big one. And then I think for some of the agencies as a whole, right, there's, we have agencies with thousands of sites on the platform, and there are times when they need to run an action across all of their sites or a mass number of them. And today that requires them using our API to do it. In a couple of months here, we're going to give them a UI that'll let them do a lot of those common things themselves. Do you, do you have a, a like a small use case, like what that action would be? Is it just updating content or is it deploying code? I think a, a simple use case is going to be like new new core version comes out. Today, Pressable manages that core version update for everybody. Uh, we let everybody stay on an old version for, I think it's 30 or 60 days. But in the case of a lot of our agencies, they know 80% of their sites are going to have no problem with a with an update to core. And so letting them update that 80% with one click uh, will save them a lot of time. And then they can go focus on those other, other 20%. The same for specific plugins, right? They they may say, you know, there's a, there's a plugin they use across all their sites and they know it doesn't cause a problem for 98% of them. So let them mass update those things, things like that. I think there's, there's a, a list of probably a dozen items that fall into that, that we're going to roll out over the coming months. That's awesome. That's cool. And that's going to be right into the UI, right? Not like 
command line so people like me just melt my head <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> well it will be in the api too I okay believe. so there we, go. Uh, we we try to we try <clears throat> to make almost everything that's in the ui available in the api i think the maybe the only limitation is like updating your billing information mm -hmm. uh, there's not much that's not available in the api very good will press will have a presence at wordcamp europe I don't know if we will yet or not. We're we're still debating. We've we've typically stayed at WordCamp US just because of the smaller team, but we we're definitely thinking about uh Europe and I'm gonna be at uh WordCamp Asia nice. uh this year. Cool. We're rooting for you on the sidelines. It's uh you know, it's a startup within within a startup and I've really enjoyed obviously my time, and I'm not just saying that because you all are sponsors, but I've been using it for a uh, using your platform for a nonprofit site that I'm a part of, and yeah, it's so easy. Like the one click login saves my butt so many times. <laughs> uh, you know, like forgetting the passwords. That those I know those are simple things, but the UI is great. And again, somebody who's been in the host, ran an agency for a decade, was in the hosting space, selling hosting. I know how critical people can be just on the like the UI experience alone. Like you'll have people tell you like hey you know i remember being at pagely back in the day when it was god awful ui and people were saying when are you going to update this thing like we're we're looking at competitors and we're going to leave if you don't give me like stats and a one-click staging um but i also know on the other flip side of that it's it's not easy to just like cr create and build this stuff and integrate it into the infrastructure so i commend you and the team for um you know what you've been doing with with pressable i think it's great yeah we appreciate the we appreciate that, and the the team works really hard to bring a, I, I think, a world class product to to the market. Hopefully, it uh, continues to be easy to use, and the feedback we get from our our, our current customers, future customers, and and even past customers is uh, really helpful to help continue uh, refining the products. Some might say even more enjoyable than dot com. I'm just the one that's going to say it, Vic. You don't you don't have to say it. <laughs> Vic, <laughs> thanks for hanging out today. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you and uh, doing your first podcast. <laughs> thanks for having me, Matt. That's it for today's episode. Get the weekly newsletter at the wpminute.com slash subscribe. Want to support the show and join a Slack group filled with WordPress professionals like you? Talk about the news, share your WordPress business content, and network with others. Head to the wpminute.com slash support and get access to our group. Support the show for as little as $5 or more if you feel we provided more value. Thanks to our pillar sponsors, Pressable, Bluehost, and Omnisend. Thanks to our Foundation Plus sponsors, WP World, Image SEO, and Hostinger. Thanks to all of our annual supporting members and you, the listener. Without your support, the WP Minute wouldn't be possible. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.